some experts on saving energy southern company. Um, so we have with us Natalie Smith and Christine Swales of Gulf Power. Natalie is, um, she helps coordinate all of the communications efforts, including this very subject, how to help people save energy, save money by saving energy, how to bundle up when it's cold, and how to save energy in the summer. And Christine is a residential energy consultant, so we've got two great experts on the subject matter. So um, I see that we've got some people here. Um, I'll go ahead and get started with some of the questions that we received ahead of time, and then you guys feel free to jump in and ask any questions that you want. So one of the questions, obviously, is <clears throat> what are some no-cost tips that people can use not to people can do now to save energy? And <clears throat> I know that we were talking a little bit before the hangout about you know what that means now when it's pretty much freezing everywhere versus in the summer. So, so what do you guys do? You have any kind of no-cost tips to get started on how to save energy? Um, well, definitely. Um, I'll go ahead and get started. Uh, you know, a lot of times you think to be energy efficient, um, we were kind of talking about this before we got started, that you have to replace all your windows and, you know, put in insul insulation and all of these very expensive um, ways to save money. But there are really so many um, low cost or no cost ways to save money immediately that don't require a lot of, um, you know, money or effort. Um, and one thing, you know, we're, we're going into the summer, but since it is uh, pretty cold across most of the country right now, um, we'll talk about some tips for during the winter and of course the biggest um, energy user in your home is to heat and cool your home that can take up about 50 percent of your energy costs on your bill um, even in an energy efficient home um, heating and cooling can take up to about 35 percent of your energy costs so um, the first and foremost thing we tell anybody to do is look at your thermostat um, in the winter we recommend keeping your thermostat at 68 degrees um, every temperature you um, put higher uh, above 68 you're going to spend about 10 percent more um, and and actually Lisa um, if we wanted to keep talking about that a little bit further um, some of the other things that you can do um, is to, to make sure you know just low cost and no cost is um, checking your um, weather stripping around your home I mean I know people hear this all the time but really checking your weather stripping I mean I just know I'll tell my own personal story around my front door um, I didn't realize that there was a big, you know, gap in the bottom of the door until I like laid down on the floor with my dog and I could see like half an inch underneath my door um, yeah. to the outside. And uh, so checking your, your caulking and stripping around all your windows and doors, um, that's a very easy very way, of easy. course, for all of your, you know, heated or cooled air to be easily going outside. Um, and, you know, well, we'll get into some more detailed things as well, but um, those are some simple things. Um, but I also want to tell people about your water heater because this is one thing I didn't know before I started working here is to check the temperature setting on your water heater. Um, your water heater is the second highest cost on your energy bill after your heating and cooling of your home. Um, and we recommend to set it no higher than 120 degrees on your water heater. And it, the temperature setting is going to depend on um, how big your family is, how much hot water you do use. So you might have to mess with it to find um, the right setting for you. Um, but you could have your water heater setting way too high and be wasting money right there as well. So just go out to your water heater and check that. That's another just easy quick thing that you can do. And what about, um, I, I noticed on mine, I don't know if everybody has this, but mine has a vacation setting where I can turn my water heater down, I guess, to, I don't know what that does. You guys know what I'm talking about? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's, that's a very good thing to have. You know, that's, if you're gone, you know, for more than three or four days, that's something good. You know, it sets it lower so that it doesn't come on all the time or, you know, um, it's just a good thing to have. That's good. Is it? Is it? Uh, is it? Uh, is it a heat pump water heater? Uh, it is. I just had to replace it. Uh -huh. um, I was going to get the. Uh, and, and this is a question you guys can maybe ask or answer. But, um, and this is kind of off, maybe a little off subject. But I got my water heater replaced, and I was looking at the tankless versus the tank. And I've got a gas forty gallon tank. And, and I'd heard that what you save um, in the tankless water heater on heating your water you may actually lose in the heat and the air that it's kind of flowing out from the tankless. Does that make sense? I guess because there's like a, there's some combustion process involved that it has to, to be vented better. I don't know. Does that, do you guys have opinion on water heater tankless versus a tank water heater? 
we actually don't recommend um, gas tanklets or ga or electric tankless water heaters. Okay. Um, and what we recommend are heat pump water heaters. The heat pump water heaters are have a um, it's called an efficiency factor of a, they can be I think it's a 2.0 or 2.4, which means it's 200 percent efficient. Um, gas tankless water heaters are, I think are only about 0.59 percent mm -hmm. efficient. Um, and then um, gas tank water heaters, I think, are about a 0.86. So, oh, okay. yeah. That's very cool. Um, so, so one of the other questions that we got was, uh, I know that, that, Natalie, you were talking about um, buying a new house, and so this is a perfect question for you guys, is if someone is considering investing in some energy efficient technology, um, you know, if they're looking for a new house, for example, what should they do ahead of time before they get in and then it becomes a huge project? Well, something that, uh, you know, we talked about this beforehand, Christine and I, because um, Gulf Power specifically offers a lot of services for our customers to be able to help someone um, who's building a new home and wants to make sure it's energy efficient. Um, so before I forget to say this at any point, um, for all of you, I know we have people on um, – you know, on today who from all over the country, um, I would check with your utility to see if they have any programs or any energy experts that would come out for free to help you look at your plans and see if they can offer advice on um, what to put install in that home. Um, we do have a program um, like that called EarthSense Home uh, where we have energy experts that will work with um, customers from beginning to end to look at their plans, make sure it's going to be an energy efficient home, um, and uh, you know, from beginning to end, because a lot of the things that happen um, when you're building that home, you might say, okay, I'm going to put in this energy efficient insulation, but you have to also make sure that that insulation is installed correctly, because if there's gaps, things like that, it's not going to do any good. Um, so uh, I just want to say that before I start talking about the specific items in the home, that um, you want to make sure that everything's being installed correctly as well, so you get the biggest bang for your buck with those items. Um, but there are an, a, a number of things, of course, everybody's heard about um, energy efficient windows. That's one of the biggest things mm -hmm. you can do is, is to uh, make sure to um, have those installed in your new home. Um, getting the proper insulation, there's different types of insulation, um, and Christine can maybe talk a little bit more about what type of insulation to put in there. Um, as well as um, putting in high efficiency lighting and appliances throughout the home. Um, we can talk about those appliances more as well, but um, the lighting throughout your home, if you're making sure that all of the light, you know, you think of one light bulb, oh, that doesn't make a difference, but if you're building a new home and you have the opportunity to, to make sure that the lighting in the entire home is going to be energy efficient and all of your appliances, that's going to really save you a lot of money down the line. Um, another big thing that um, that's very important when you're building the home is uh, making sure that you have a tight um, envelope and HVAC duct system. Yeah. Um, that's that's not something I'm as educated on, but uh, you know, having that proper duct work um, work efficiently in your home is huge. You can lose uh, you know hundreds of dollars a year in general if you're losing air through your duct work. Um, and that's something else that if you already have a home, you're not building a home, um, to check out that duct work and making sure you're not losing um, airflow through that as well. Um, Christine, if you wanted to go into any of the details of any of that. Um, yeah, it, HVAC, you know, people or um, companies can check duct work, um, make sure everything is, is, is sealed uh, sealed and everything. Um, as far as, um, let me see, the heating and cooling equipment, what we recommend here for our customers at Gulf Power is um, heat pumps. Um, that's just what we, pump water heat, yeah, heat pump. Um, oh, you know, I'm sorry. No, yeah. The heating and cooling um, are heat pumps, and um, let me see what else. Um, as far as um, geothermal, yeah, is, is everybody familiar with um, the geothermal heat pumps? No, what is that? Yeah, I'd like to hear a little bit more about mm -hmm. that. Um, geothermal heat pumps, they um, are basically, um, they don't have an outside unit like most air conditioning, he heating and air conditioning units are. Um, they actually um, take advantage of the Earth's um, temperature. There's loops that are um, buried underneath the ground, so it takes mm -hmm. advantage of the Earth's constant temperature. Um, here in um, northwest Florida, the constant temperature is around um, about 68 to 70 degrees. So it uses that temperature, that constant temperature to get its efficiency. 
Um, and um, that's yeah. definitely interesting. I, I, we always assume that solar is the only way to harness mm -hmm. natural energy. So, so that's very interesting. Geothermal has been a big thing recently, especially for um, larger businesses and um, you know commercial businesses because that can save them so much money as well. And um, you know, uh, one of the big things with geothermal is since it's underground, you don't have to worry about some of that maintenance that can come along with that. Um, I know we've had some, I think, schools out on the beach, you know, they get a lot of um, living out on a, a barrier island. They wanted to do that so they could have everything kind of protected. It's underground. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you do also, you know, the way it's explained to me is, that, you know, the ground's a constant temperature. So it can um, pull hot air or, t you know, take hot air from, you know, uh, from the ground and, um, you know, be able to use those uh, loops, loops. To, to cool and heat your home and uh, in a very, very efficient way. So that's something that's, in my opinion, kind of a, a newer thing that some um, homeowners are starting to get into. And uh, that's another big thing if you're building a home to be looking into what would be best for you as far as heating and cooling of your home. Because again, that is by far the biggest cost for your home. So the more efficient you can make that system and um, airtight you can make your home home um, is is very very important you're going to save so much money I had a question um, you guys mentioned earlier about sort of getting a, an energy audit if you will of your house and having someone come out from your local utility is that just is that like for new construction or what you know I live in an older home like a 1920s home will someone like come out to a house that, that it's an old house and sort of check it room to room and, and give us ideas or how, do you know how that works region to region well, um, unfortunately, we don't know if every utility offers something like that, but um, an energy uh, checkup is something that uh, is another thing I would highly encourage all of you to check with your utility and see if they offer this. Um, Southern Company or Gulf Power specifically, um, we do offer energy audits, and that this is where you don't have it doesn't have to be a new home; it can be you know okay, existing, a, a existing yeah, brand new build, whatever type of home uh, you have. As long as you're one of our customers, um, we'll send out an energy expert uh, resident residential energy expert or one for businesses as well um, like Christine and they'll go out to your home and basically sit down with you and go over things with your home that are not energy efficient um, help you prioritize what you need to do to get your bill down and this is something we do for free um, for you know uh, residential customers as well as business customers and um, we also have an online tool that if you don't want to have someone come into your home and and do that you can uh, go to our website and we can perform an online energy audit as well you'll at, answer several questions about your home and it'll go ahead and, and give you those tips as well but for me I think um, you know if, if your local utility does something like that take advantage of it because if you don't know where to start if you know you're just you want to be more energy efficient you want to save money on your bills ultimately which is what we all want to do right. um, to have someone come out to your home for free hopefully um, and tell you you know hey this is you really need to do this this is where you're going to get the most money back um, by investing mm -hmm. in this this and this um, and be able to talk to an expert about your specific needs in your home it gives you um, it helps you to prioritize Ties, um, rather than just being all over the place, I don't know where to start, I don't know what to do, you know, I can't afford all of this and that, you know, they'll, they'll come out and really work with you one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so I'm hoping that um, everybody else that listens to this will be able to reach out to the utility, um, you know, or some sort of, um, you know, heating and cooling. Um, I, I know heating and cooling companies as well, um, sometimes they'll come out and do a, a checkup on your heating and cooling system, see how that's working as well. If you can't get the entire home uh, energy audit. You can do things like that to check up on your appliances and make sure they're working properly. Um, so th that's a that's a great place to start if you live in our service territory or if you um, can look at your own utility and, and find out what they have to offer. Right. Right. Hmm. Any other questions? No, I was just going to say, uh, sorry, apologies for um, turning up late. I've, I have hung, hung out with... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have hung out with, with Mother Nature and, 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 and sort of similar partners that are, that are on here online. Uh, my name is Nick Miles. I represent uh, the Green Age. Uh, we're a consumer-based website in the UK, and just some of those points that you uh, you just said said about sort of en energy audits. So it's, it's a little bit different. What what um, what's happened here in the UK is the government have launched a framework called the Green Deal, hmm. and what it is 
it's kind of um, it, it's a national energy audit where people can call up and and, and get their um, homes assessed for energy improvement measures. So, you know, it, it looks at typical attributes of the house, um, gives you a rating between one and a hundred, where one is incredibly energy inefficient, and a hundred is the most greenest house ever, which is probably <laughs> un un unattainable. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, that's fantastic. You know, I haven't heard of any, you know, government programs like that available, um, although I haven't really looked into um, to that if there's if, if there's different, you know, any federal um, things like that. Of course, we all know about tax credits that, um, mm -hmm. you know, we can get on certain um, energy efficient items, but that yeah. is fantastic that they're really taking that to um, offer that to everyone because it's really, you know, saving energy. Um, that's important to everyone, you know. Um, uh, countries as a whole, they're they're they want people to be saving energy, and um, so that's fantastic. And it's free; it's free for everyone to find. No, no. So let me just. So if I just cl clarify, so it's a government framework that's that's allowing the the private sector here in the UK to deliver uh, an energy efficiency retro, retrofit homes with energy efficiency measures hmm. so by 20, 20, uh, 50 we can meet our you know external um, co2 emission targets that we've um, you know agreed to with, with, with the Euro European Union but um, you know essentially the government's kind of said okay well that's the framework that we want the private sector to operate and okay. you know, go out and, okay. and deliver it and you know it's been live for about two months. Um, my organisation does the assessments, so you know we go into homes. Uh, some the answer to your question, some local authorities or local districts, as you, you call it, give out these things for free, and they have been giving them out for, for free for mm -hmm. obviously customers that are a bit more sort of savvy and aware, and have been you know that, that follow, follow these things, so they they managed to get the free ones. Uh, but but others, you know, it's uh, it's it, it's it's a small small cost, um, you know, between 150 to 200 of your US dollars. Um, you know, when they get this report, you know, customers don't have to go for any energy saving measures. The, the reports also give them advice about behavioural changes. You know, it can be simple stuff like water, heating, and and, and lighting. Uh, and and you know, we'll say at the end whether this green deal framework is the best financing mechanism to finance your energy efficiency um, you know improvements if you're a uh, you know very good house then you know might not be the best thing but if you're incredibly energy inefficient it's um, you know something worth worth looking at yeah, yeah. it's worth the um, investment at that point but but I mean to your point about the local utility companies you know yes they are sort of trying to um, you know encourage the most vulnerable um, of their customers to, to sort of take it up and, and, and there is sort of help to help those that are sort of most needy and um, you know that, that obviously you know with energy prices going up yes you know, those are the people that, that struggle to pay the bills the most so, so there is there, there is a bit of help there but you know most of the other people it's again you know it's quite a good way because if you do take this green deal thing it allows you to um, you know take a financing package that you, you pay on your electricity bill over 10-15 years so mm -hmm. you know it doesn't doesn't require any upfront cost if you sort of take the measures um, they sort of pay for themselves because you know the savings that you get on your bill are meant to pay off for the measures that you get installed that that's that's why they sort of brought this framework in so right. but you know just just a bit of comparison I just just want yeah. to sort of say that yeah very cool well energy audits are, are good for anyone so that's I mean I think those kind of programs available to anyone whether you have to pay for one I think like you said some some people might not need that as much but there are plenty of people out there that just need help getting started and um, where they have no idea what to do um, mm -hmm. you know I didn't know about all of this before I started working at a utility mm -hmm. um, so there's lots of education um, that needs to be done to, to help people get there so I think that's great I had a question about when you say education and a question about maybe education within the family, if you will. So what happens um, in your in your all's travels as you're sort of going from place to place and doing these presentations? Um, do you run into families where there's, say, one or two people in the family who really want to limit showers and want to turn off lights when people leave the room, for example, teenagers when they leave a room? <laughs> um, what sort of ideas, have you guys come up with any clever, heard of any clever ideas where people talk others in the family and sort of being part of their energy saving mission? Um, I haven't heard of anything. I mean, I, I do get those types of families, you know, that mm -hmm. they've got te teenagers and 
the girls especially take long showers and all that. But right. I haven't, right. you know, I just, I, what I do, my main job is, um, again, just to educate people and, and mm -hmm. tell them, you know, this is what's using your energy and it's up to them to, I guess, to, to execute it and help let their family <laughs> the persuasion, members. persuasion, so, right, right. You know, so right. well, it's hard. Yeah, and I, <laughs> right. I think that's, you know, difficult with anything, with all teenagers, you know, trying to um, get your whole family to be on board. Um, mm -hmm. You know, to me, it's interesting to show people in general and, and, you know, teenagers, the family, you know, talk to them, show them the bill, talk to them about the bill, mm -hmm. you know, hey, this mm -hmm. month we got it down this low. And mm -hmm. um, uh, something that... Uh, uh, you know, Gulf Power is doing in the future to help people understand, um, you know, their impact on the bill. You know, that's something that we're always trying to teach people is that um, you have an impact on your bill. You know, you are in control of how much energy you use um, right. each month. And I think, you know, when you're talking to teenagers or, or anyone really, and um, when when you go out, is is letting them know what the power that they have in their hands. Mm -hmm. um, and something we're doing here is, um, y you know, it's it's not out there yet, but we're going to be launching something for our customers to be able to, um, you know, view how much energy they're using at any given time during the month. Um, I kind of compare it to like your your phone bill. If you're, um, you know, in the middle of the month, you can get updates about, you know, you've used this many minutes. You know, you're about mm -hmm. to go over. Um, we're trying to um, be able to have that technology available to our customers so they can see, hey, you know, we're we're about to reach, you know, this limit. Um, you know, and you can view it by how much money you've spent and how many um, how much actual energy you've used. Um, mm -hmm. So that I think is going to be huge um, for our customers and across the country for people to start really being able to see, you, you know, um, okay, we've spent this much, we can start cutting back, you know, let's make sure that you turn off those lights, you know, turn up that AC, it doesn't need to be that cold in here, and things like mm -hmm. that, and see the power that they have in their hands to lower that bill, that, you, you know, you're not just at the mercy of, you know, this is it, this is the bill, and there's nothing we can do. Um, and what's also going to be cool um, that we're going to be launching is um, it's going to show um, on the graph, it'll show uh, the weather, you know, at the same time, because some people don't realize how much weather has an impact on their bill. Um, you know, if you keep your thermostat at, you know, the same temperature all the time, that's great. But if it's, you know, 60 degrees outside one day and, you know, you have your, your thermostat set for 70, I mean, then it's 20 degrees the next day, your heating and cooling system has to work that much mm -hmm. harder to keep your, mm -hmm. your, temp your temperature in your home the same uh, temperature. You'd think most people would kind of, you know, make that connection, um, but we just want to make sure people are understanding that, um, that weather has a, has a big part of that and um, to, to acclimate to that and see if you mm -hmm. can do other things to, to lower the bill in other ways and, um, you know, and use those electric blankets instead of turning your thermostat and things like that. So mm -hmm. um, that's well, what I th think is, is great to educate people on, um, is that you do have more power than you think, um, no pun intended, um, <laughs> uh, on your bill. So Natalie, you mentioned, um, you know, if you have your temperature set to 68 every day and, and the weather fluctuates, uh, I, have a, I have a programmable thermostat. So you know, I assume that I'm doing doing the right thing by having it set at like 68 in the winter and you know 78 in the summer, right? Uh, 72. I, I know. I gotta get <laughs> 78. <laughs> Just get used to it. Sweat yeah. it out. You'll be fine. Baby steps. So uh, I got the electric blanket. So we're we're we're, we're good there. Okay. Um, so is the programmable thermostat then? How do you kind of work? You know, how do you manage that? You kind of think set it and forget it, and I'm doing the right thing. But to your point, and especially right now in Atlanta. We could be 42 degrees one day and 76 the next. Mm -hmm. Well, and really, I mean, for me, what I think of the programmable thermostat is to make sure you're not, um, you know, if you're just someone that's going to just, you know, oh, it's kind of cold in here. I'm going to turn, you know, I'm going to turn up the heater, you know, and, and then you're going to forget about it. and You turn it up to, um, you know, 78 degrees when it's cold outside and you, you know, just you set it and forget it, but in a horrible way. Mm -hmm. um, that's how I look at a programmable thermostat. Um, you know, you're exactly right. It's going to have to work harder, which is why we do have recommendations of no lower than 68 degrees in the winter and no higher than 78. Those are kind of just some really good standards. Um, you know, if we were to say no lower than 80 degrees in the in the winter, you're going to have a really high bill all the time. But 68, mm -hmm. it's you know, it's kind of pushing those limits, but it's going to keep you at a good steady um, 
energy use amount um, without being too cold and without your heater having to work too hard um, to keep that 68 degrees. Um, so that that's why, again, it's just that programmable thermostat allows you to, um, you're not going to, there's going to be less human error of you forgetting, oh my God, I, you know, turn the AC on when it's super hot outside and I turned it down to 67 last night because I was hot and I left it on all day um, and I'm not even there so I'm just wasting all that money. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's how I look at the programmable thermostat. I don't know if Christy yeah, have anything is. to add um, to that but good question though because mm -hmm. it's still you know when it gets down to negative 10 you're just you know <laughs> Yeah. Unless you, you're, it's going to work harder, um, but that is another reason why it, it is going to work harder to keep you somewhat warm and you know not have to freeze you know freeze too much. But um, but that is another explanation of of why your bill could go up one month and down another. So, mm -hmm. and Yaman, did you have any questions? Oh, sorry, my microphone's off. <laughs> um. No. <laughs> <laughs> you just answered every question. No more questions in the world about this. Good. No. The truth is, I, I was going to ask about the um, the weather changing because it does fluctuate a lot. But at least it's mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. And you and know, that's that's the one thing we can't control. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if we you know? could control that, then we'd be. Although I don't think Mother Nature Network would be cool with that. But we that's right. We can't control that part of it. But um, you know, it is, and everybody has their different comfort level. You know, if you want to always be you know super warm in the winter and super cold in the summer you know that's fine but that's your it's your choice you know it's it's up to you how much you're willing to to spend Dispense. on that bill that's you know right. um, and what you're comfortable with so I did have I did have one more like question about um, again another myth busting type of question if you will so burning a fire in your fireplace right mm. I've heard it's a great idea to keep the place warm. I've also heard that it kind of sucks energy right out the chimney because of all of the air that it pulls in. So what are your guys' thoughts on, on using a fire to kind of help offset some of the, the energy costs of heating a home? Did you want to answer that one? Um, well, um, the fireplace is a good one. And, of course, in Florida, I know nothing about fireplaces yeah. because we live <laughs> Florida. Although I love them so much, they're so adorable. Um, but it, it can end up taking out the warm air from your home through the airflow through the chimney. Mm -hmm. So that is something to be careful of. Um, glass doors on the fireplace, um, that will reduce the outflow of the warm air from your home. Um, and a fireplace with a blower system is actually better because it um, will blow the warm air around the firebox back into the room. And I'm assuming all you people in the north know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm, you know, I'm not familiar with any of those things. But um, so that's just things to kind of keep in mind because it is, you know, you have a hole in your chimney, and that warm air is going to go out of the, um, out of your home. So things like a glass door can help keep that warm air inside. Um, and kind of like what Christine was talking about earlier. I mean, we have some tips that I would hope everybody knows this, but don't use your oven to heat up your home. I mean, those, those are things I'm like, that's crazy. Who would do that? But you know, I apparently. Known. People have done that, mm -hmm. um, and using things like space heaters, um, that's going to um, actually, you know, be more efficient at times to just heat up a room, um, just like you would use a fan in the summer. You know, just use that fan to keep you cool. Um, but again, um, he, well, and I would say this about heaters too, um, or space heaters. Space heaters and fans heat and cool people, not rooms. So. Mm -hmm. Um, or at least the fans don't um, don't cool the room. So during the summertime, if you have fans on and you have one on in every room of the house, you're doing nothing. It's not cooling down the house. That's just for you and your comfort. Um, so turn those fans off unless you're in the room and you're using it to cool yourself down. Um, space heaters will like you know they, they will heat up your your area and everything. But um, to use those, that'll help you to not have to heat up, of course, your whole house, which is why a lot of people use space heaters. But of course, you know we want to always put out warnings about being careful with space heaters and where you put them and, mm -hmm. and how you use them exactly. Um, we all know about, or hopefully, um, some of the dangers that can come along with those, but they can be a more um, efficient option um, to heat just the room that you're in and, um, you know, not have to heat the whole house. Awesome. That's great. Does anybody have any other questions before we let Natalie and Christine go? This is a really helpful um, uh, 
Q and A, if you will. I actually yeah. learned some things to apply. Well, yeah, in household, so that's really helpful. Well, and, and, and again, and from across the pond, huh? Any other tips oh. from across the pond? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, just two things: don't get a power shower because um, they can waste more water than a bath. And um, if you're looking to <laughs> retrofit your your lights, um, going for low energy lighting is, is a good option. Right. And right. They they can pay back, but um, but also if you think about it, um, you want need to replace the bulbs as as often. So the low energy lighting lasts you a long, long time, and keep on making the savings. You know, as you, as you go through the years, whereas uh, an incandescent light bulb, you know, will go twice a year. So, a couple of tips. Excellent. Yeah, um, and CFLs actually last about 10 times longer than incandescent bulbs, so he's exactly right about that. I mean, even though they're more expensive up front, they last so much longer, you're going to get your money back with that. It's the, by far the smartest choice. Um, and, and before we go, I just want to say again for everybody to, and hopefully I'm not making any other utility look bad, but check with your utility and see what kind of programs they have. Um, we also have uh, several rebates that we offer our customers. This is not um, from the government. It's not uh, you know, tax incentives. It's from our utility that we give actual rebates if you install um, uh, you know, energy efficiency appliances in your home. If you install energy efficient um, windows, uh, roofing, um, insulation, um, heating and cooling equipment. Yeah, we have a refrigerator recycling program. If you recycle your old refrigerator, we'll give you $35 and pick it up for free. Hmm. Um, we have all of these things available, and um, if, if your utility has anything like that, um, take advantage of it. Um, they want you to be more energy efficient, and, um, you know, there, there are a lot of others out there even if you don't live in, in our service territory that um, might have similar programs to that. If you're doing any sort of energy efficiency upgrades, um, I'd check out their website, give them a call and see if they have anything to offer you as well. Just one last thing too, I just remembered um, what I see a lot of when I do energy audits is um, people do not change out their air filters. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, what we recommend is every 30 days to, to replace the, um, the air filters. Because if once those get, because of when they get dirty, um, it restricts the airflow that the, the unit needs. So the unit is working a lot harder and a lot longer than it needs to. So it, need that, it needs to be cleaned out. It's simple but necessary, exactly. and it gets gross if you don't yeah. change it out. <laughs> and my programmable thermostat actually has a little reminder for me to change my filter oh, wow. links until I um, hit that I've already changed it. It's very helpful. Mm. Very cool. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us, and and Nick, thanks for joining us as well. I appreciate all of the tips, and this hangout will be available for you guys to share um, probably about five or ten minutes from now. And um, if you aren't already following Southern Company on Google+, Plus, you should and get some more energy saving tips and we will see you next month with our fourth month of a year of living simply thanks everybody have a good day thank you bye thank you, thank you.